Um, hi again. After a relatively long break, I decided to continue with the series Theory of Knowledge Explained, where I try to explain some key TOK concepts simply but not simplistically. In doing so, I am addressing the most common misconceptions existing among students and teachers alike, some superficial ideas that need to be debunked if you want to not only kind of know TOK as a subject, but to really understand TOK. These videos are in support of Semantic Education's IBTOK resources, so check them out if you haven't already. We have a TOK textbook, teacher support packs, the blog, uh, a Facebook group for TOK teachers, and the menu of lessons, absolutely free, that includes uh, a brief description of all 97 lessons in our book. Just a quick reminder about the previous episodes in this series. In the first episode, I talked about falsifiability, explaining how it works as a concept and why it is such a revolutionary idea in philosophy of science. And I also addressed the common misinterpretations of falsifiability. That episode also had a reference to poodles that pee on rooftops. Watch the episodes to find out how peeing poodles are related to scientific methodology. In the second episode, I explained why it is wrong to say that natural sciences are objective. And in the third episode, I explained why it is wrong to say that human sciences are subjective. These ideas are so frequent in student essays, but they are also so, so superficial. So in this fourth episode, I thought it would be a good idea to switch over to another area of knowledge and debunk another common superficial belief. So this episode is about mathematics. It is a common argument in TOK discussions that mathematics, unlike other areas of knowledge, is absolutely certain and precise, and that bias has no place in mathematics, except perhaps when a mathematician makes a mistake, but mistakes are not biases. Students and teachers often use mathemat mathematics as an example of a definite, certain, even pure area of knowledge that has no place for conflicting perspectives or subjective interpretations. So I will try to debunk this statement and explain why I think it's wrong, or at least superficial, to believe that mathematics is certain. Um, before I continue, I need to delineate what exactly I mean when I say mathematics, because I anticipate some objections and apparently it is not so simple. When I say mathematics, I mean the axiomatic system of knowledge that is based on deductive proof. Traditional mathematics, the way it was born. You see, there are some new forms of mathematical knowledge that emerged recently, such as computer-assisted proofs or proof by exhaustion, where instead of constructing a deductive proof that shows how a theorem follows from previously proven axioms, we make a computer algorithm that basically sifts through all possible scenarios one by one. There is no proof involved in such a case. It's just a brute force approach. Proof by exhaustion has had a hard time being accepted as part of mathematics, precisely because it goes against the fundamental principles on which mathematics has been built for centuries. So when I say mathematics, I mean mathematics the traditional way, where a mathematician sits down with a pencil and paper and constructs a deductive proof that links a new theorem to previously accepted axioms and shows that logically, if the axioms are true, then the theorem must also certainly be true. Secondly, when I say mathematics, I mean mathematics itself and not its numerous applications. For example, I appreciate that statistical analysis can be used in human sciences to investigate social phenomena. And yes, there are many ways, for example, to compute it correlation and to interpret a correlation coefficient. There is not much certainty about which correlation coefficient to choose, which sample of participants to recruit, and how to interpret and generalize the results. However, it's not mathematics that is uncertain in this case. It's the human sciences that apply mathematical analysis as a tool. Human sciences are uncertain in this example, but not mathematics. Mathematics as an area of knowledge has developed the concept of correlation, and it has deduced theorems that allowed mathematicians to quantify probabilities. It has developed the correlation coefficient itself. So it is this mathematics I'm talking about, the axiomatic system based on deductive proof, the pure mathematics independent of its applications. 
It is a common belief among students that this pure mathematics provides knowledge that is absolutely certain. And it is this belief that I will try to disagree with. So my first argument is that there is no such thing as a single mathematics. Mathematics is not a single axiomatic system. It is a collection of multiple axiomatic systems, or if you will, multiple mathematicses. The common example is Euclidean and non-Euclidean geometry. They are based on different assumptions, different axioms. Euclidean geometry assumes that everything is happening on a perfectly flat surface. Non-Euclidean geometries do not make such an assumption. They assume that some of them assume that there is a curvature in the surface. For example, the surface is a sphere. Something that is true in Euclidean geometry will not necessarily be true in a non-Euclidean geometry. For example, if you draw a triangle on a perfectly flat surface, yes, the sum of its angles will be 180 degrees. And Euclidean geometry can deductively prove that. But if you draw a triangle on a slightly curved surface of the Earth, the sum of its angles will not be equal to 180 degrees, and Euclidean theorems will not be valid. Similarly, it is true that parallel lines don't intersect as long as you make the assumption of an absolutely flat surface. But once you introduce a curvature, it is no longer true. The equivalent of parallel lines on the surface of our planet would be the meridians, and they do intersect on the poles. So there is no single mathematics, but there are multiple mathematicses. These are all different axiomatic systems. They're based on different sets of starting axioms. Within each of these axiomatic systems, there could be perfect certainty in how we move from axioms to theorems and how we construct deductive proofs. This whole building may be consistent and non-contradictory and absolutely certain within the building itself. But there are many different buildings. So how do we know which one to choose? Can we say, for example, that non-Euclidean geometry is better or closer to the truth than Euclidean geometry? Or should all these multiple mathematicses coexist as equally important? Non-Euclidean geometry was certainly a lot more useful to Einstein when he suggested that space is a curvature. Euclidean geometry was useless to describe such a space. Are they all equally important or is one better than the others? And can we just arbitrarily choose a bunch of starting axioms and construct a new axiomatic system, like a new building, a new mathematics, and claim that it is as valuable as all other mathematics is? As long as there are no contradictions within the system, it's fine from the deductive point of view. And a judgment about which set of axioms is better, for example, which set of axioms reflects the real world more accurately, is not a mathematical judgment. It's not within the scope of mathematics. So there we go. There is some uncertainty in mathematics associated with the multiple axiomatic systems. You can't compare them because by definition they cannot be compared because they're based in different assumptions. So what do we do? Just continue arbitrarily constructing them? Or is there a way to prefer one to another? Uncertainty. So my second argument is uh, Gödel's second incompleteness theorem. I'm sure you've heard about it and I do not claim to understand it fully but I will try to explain my simplified version of it and what it means for the idea that mathematics is certain. So mathematics is an axiomatic system. At the foundation of it, there is a starting set of axioms, and then we apply rules of logical reasoning and demonstrate that if these axioms are true, then some other statements must also be true. In other words, these other statements, we call them theorems, logically follow from these axioms. Once proven, these statements can then be used to generate new statements, and that's how this whole building can deductively grows. To be true in such a system simply means to be provable. If a statement can be proven by showing that it logically follows from the original axioms, then this statement is true. But there exists a situation where one and the same set of axioms can be used to prove two statements that contradict each other. If this happens, we call such axiomatic systems inconsistent. 
Inconsistency means that they generate statements that contradict each other. For example, suppose you have a set of axioms using which you are able to deductively prove that two plus two equals four. But then you are able to demonstrate from the same axioms that two plus two equals five also follows from the same axioms. So within your axiomatic system, both two plus two equals four and two plus two equals five are true. I mean, can be proven. This can only mean one thing, that your axiomatic system is, what's the scientific word for it? Rubbish, because it creates a contradiction. Its axioms give rise to inconsistent statements. And so it's, a, it's an inconsistent axiomatic system, meaning something is wrong with the original axioms. So we have to discard the whole system. Obviously, we want our mathematics to be consistent. Because if it isn't, we kind of need to demolish the whole building, right? If it creates even one contradiction, we cannot really trust it. If you can prove that four equals five, then mathematics no longer makes any sense. Summation doesn't make sense. The equal sign doesn't make sense. It's a big deal. We want an absolute absence of contradictions. We can only trust an axiomatic system if it is consistent. So far, mathematics is doing really well in terms of being consistent. But the thing is, it's mathematics. So we must be certain about everything. And we must be certain that mathematics is consistent and that it will remain consistent in the future. So the big question is, can mathematics prove its own consistency? Because you see, if mathematics cannot construct a deductive proof of its own consistency, then we cannot really be entirely certain that it is consistent. And then we cannot be certain in any of its claims. That is why it's so important that mathematics, if it wants to keep the status of an absolutely certain area of knowledge, can prove its own consistency. And this is where Gödel's second incompleteness theorem enters. Gödel was able to prove that no axiomatic system can prove its own consistency. Think about it this way. We can prove with certainty that mathematics cannot prove its own certainty. It does not mean that mathematics is not certain, but it is not able to prove that it is certain. And that is actually almost equally bad in mathematics. There is provable uncertainty associated with whether or not mathematics is certain. To understand Gödel's second incompleteness theorem, I like the following simplified explanation. Try to follow my lead. In mathematics, it can be proven that 2 plus 2 equals 4. And it can be proven that it can be proven that 2 plus 2 equals 4. On the other hand, it can be proven that 2 plus 2 is not 5. And it can be proven that it can be proven that 2 plus 2 is not 5. Can it be proven that 2 plus 2 is 5? We hope not, because if it can, it will create a contradiction and it would mean that mathematics on the whole is inconsistent and therefore rubbish. So we want a guarantee that it cannot be proven that 2 plus 2 equals 5. Can we prove that it cannot be proven that 2 plus 2 equals 5? Gödel's theorem says no. He demonstrated in a deductive proof that it cannot be proven that it cannot be proven that 2 plus 2 equals 5. Although mathematics can prove that 2 plus 2 is not 5, it cannot prove that it cannot be proven that 2 plus 2 is 5. Ta-da! So to summarize, what do we have? Indeed, mathematics is certain. In fact, being certain is what sets mathematics apart from other areas of knowledge. Mathematics is the only area of knowledge where we can use the word prove in relation to knowledge. This is because mathematics is based on deductive proof. And in deductive proof, you demonstrate that as long as the axioms are true and there is no mistake in logic, then the conclusions must also be true, must with 100% certainty everywhere and at all times. This kind of level of certainty is not achievable even in natural sciences, where the laws we construct are only inductive. And there is always a chance that these laws will stop working one day or will not work in some other locations of the universe. Laws of physics may seem fundamental and universal, and we may believe that they apply everywhere, but they don't. For example, laws of physics break in a black hole or at the moment of the Big Bang. 
Newtonian physics breaks down once you zoom in to the level of subatomic particles. With mathematics, it is not like that. If we prove that B follows from A, then we know that B follows from A anywhere in the universe and anywhere in time, always with absolute certainty. But there are at least two big limitations to this certainty. First, the axioms. Mathematics is certain as long as we're talking about drawing conclusions from axioms within an axiomatic system. This certainty exists within the axiomatic system. But the problem is there are many axiomatic systems. It is possible to construct many mathematics. And this is where a certainty breaks down. How do you compare them? Is one better than the other? Are they just arbitrary? Second, and this is a little more difficult to understand, even if we imagine that we have selected one axiomatic system, one mathematics, and we know that it is the best one, absolute certainty still doesn't exist, even within this axiomatic system. This is because no axiomatic system, according to Gödel's second incompleteness theorem, can prove its own consistency. If mathematics cannot prove its consistency, it means that there exists a chance that somewhere down the line, it will create a contradiction. And if that happens, this will be truly catastrophic because after all these years, we will realize that we cannot trust mathematics. This is why you cannot really make such blunt and categorical statements as mathematics is certain. It is a lot more certain compared to other areas of knowledge, yes, but even with mathematics, there are limits to how certain it is. Moreover, we can prove that these limits will always remain there. There are things in mathematics that are unknowable. That is, we will never know them, and we know that we will never know. Don't forget to check out our TOK resources, the textbooks, the teacher support packs that include all lesson plans and activities and handouts, the free menu of 97 lessons, our blog and our Facebook group for TOK teachers. All links you can find in the description below the video. Watch out for our next episode and see you next time.